The COVID-19 pandemic has been a test of the U.S.-China relationship. And it saddens me to say that the relationship has failed this test. I want to take everybody back to SARS. I think a lot of the lessons learned from SARS have influenced everything that's happened during COVID-19, some of those lessons being really useful and some of those lessons perhaps sending people a little bit in the wrong directions, um, not just in China, but in other countries around the world. So the first lesson from SARS was that cover-ups are a really bad idea. The big lesson of SARS that got overlearned for the beginning of COVID was with SARS, only symptomatic people were spreaders. Whereas with COVID, it turns out that asymptomatic people are spreaders and we still have no idea what percentage of people that are infected are asymptomatic. But it's clear that the disease was seeded much earlier than anyone imagined in Europe, in North America, and nobody was looking for it. SARS, because it was symptomatic, it was much easier to track cases and do contact tracing. But the one thing that we do know is that our close cooperation in the past actually made a huge difference. And the real question now is how can we get back to that? Because there's a lot more work to be done. Domestically though, um, you know, in terms of notifying Chinese citizens, uh, there was a delay um, as well documented by Taishin, um, because of this uh, institutionally within the Chinese Communist Party, all information is supposed to flow upward first, at first, and then uh, on important information such as a potential pandemic, the central authorities are supposed to decide whether or not to inform the public about it. This was the problem, uh, I gather, you know, during SARS also. Uh, and it was once again a problem this time. So very quickly about some of the economic things. A couple of things I would, I would uh, you know, I think matters to the rest of the world as we're dealing with the coronavirus is that it has been very difficult, even though uh, the pandemic, had, you can say in some sense, has passed in China for Chinese economic activities to revive. So it's taken a very, very long time and this is a country with a lot of planned economy too. So the government literally ordered these enterprises to resume production. Yet, if you look at electricity output data and other data sources, it's not back at 100%, not, not by a long stretch. Uh, a global threat like a pandemic deserves a global solution. And that the only sensible pragmatic thing to do is for the two largest economies in the world to coordinate their efforts. But in fact, instead, what we see is that the political leaders of both countries have been defending themselves against public cr criticism of their own performance, how they mishandled, especially the early stages of the epidemic, by diverting blame to the other country. Uh, as Debbie Seligson has said, the United States and China have managed to cooperate in the past, not just with SARS, but H1N1, uh, H7N9 in 2013, Ebola in Africa in 2014. Um, but this time, you know, I think it's quite revealing about the state of U.S.-China relations have become so hostile, filled with so much uh, mutual suspicion at, at the political level and increasingly at the mass level too, that it's been impossible so far to really have the kind of pragmatic cooperation that's needed and will be needed uh, to mobilize the massive international effort that we're going to need to develop, test, and distribute therapies and vaccines for COVID-19.